Yes, sir. Hey, this is George Saldana. Go ahead. So, um, so your name is Noe Santana? Correct. Okay. And you're in the 309th District Court in Harris County? Right. Yes, sir. Uh, how long have you been in that court? Uh, since March of 2019, or actually uh, 20. Yeah, because uh, our case went to trial in March of 2019, but the case was under a previous judge, I believe, from 2017. Okay. Um, and you're okay with me recording this and putting it out? Yes, sir. Okay. So, tell me a little bit about your story. Okay. Uh, I had have a custody case in Judge Dunson's court. Uh, our case went to trial in March of 2019. I believe March the 18th was our trial date. Now, uh, Mom's attorney is an attorney by the name of Julie Ketterman. Now, uh, let me pull this up real quick. Hours before our case went to trial, Judge Dunson announced on her Facebook page that uh, there was going to be a fundraiser at the other attorney's office. And I had no idea that this, uh, you know, was going on, that, uh, you know, who, who thinks of, uh, you know, searching uh, the judges any, anything before a trial? You know, you, you always assume that the judge is going to be fair and impartial, not taking sides or anything like that. And it turns out that Judge Dunson had a fundraiser at the other attorney's office and raised 16,000, hang on just a second, I can get you, I'm pulling up the information now. Now that, that was Ketterman, right? Attorney yes, Ketterman's sir. office? Right. And they held a fundraiser at uh, Ketterman's office uh, in January of 2019, uh, just after uh the judge had been sworn in our initial court date was on january the 4th and then we were reset a couple of days later to get a trial date and in that time uh they they held a fundraiser at the attorney's office uh sometime in january that raised over sixteen thousand dollars for the judge and when we went to trial in March, uh, here we go. Uh, when we went to trial in March, uh, we were never informed that there was a fundraiser at uh, Ketterman's office for Judge Dunson on January the 24th. And they raised a total of, hang on here, $16,300. Yeah. And in fact, on the same day as the fundraiser, uh, January the 24th, Judge Dunson cut two checks to Julie Ketterman, one for $2,513.69 to reimburse for food, drinks, and advertisement for the fundraiser. And that was check 1011 from Judge Dunson's political expenditures and just to confirm and, you you send me those documents correct yes sir i did and the second check was for uh 335 dollars for bartender and security uh, for the fundraiser and the judge reported that on her campaign finance report but again my issue was uh, the trial was in March of 2019. This report was not filed until, I believe, July the 1st. Hang on just a second. Yeah, uh, no, June the 30th, 2019. And it covered 
uh, her campaign finances from January 1st to June 30th of 2019. So when our trial started, there was no way I could have known that this had happened and that there was money exchanged between Judge Dunson and Julie Ketterman. Now, let me ask you, do you know who was running against Judge Linda Dunson? Uh, the incumbent, her name, uh, it was another uh, another female judge. I mean, we could find it out, but have you made it known to them? Uh, I, I spoke to someone and essentially, you know, they said it was water under the bridge. Did <laughs> this far into it, you know, she's already been elected served her four years, and then, you know, she's running for re-election now. Yeah, so um, I know we haven't met. You know, we, we this is our first time talking pretty much, and, yeah. you know, I, I'll tell you right now, I've, I'm in the 309th court. Um, but some of the things that you're explaining are some of the things that I've had done to me, um, except the financial stuff, because I've never dug into her financials, but... I can tell you it's very unethical what goes on in her courtroom. But what else do you do you know that has come out of this whole issue? Okay. On hang on just a second. Okay, Judge Dunson, I believe on March the twelfth. Okay. Uh, Texas Ethics Commission Rule two fifty three dot one fifty one. Mm -hmm. states that anyone running for election and in the 2018 election, this would have been November the 6th. After 120 days, a judicial candidate or a judge can no longer accept political contributions. Now, Judge Dunson received a check from an attorney by the name of David Romero, and I'll get you the exact date in just a second. Okay, uh, she re she wrote a check back to David Romero on March the thirteenth, twenty nineteen, for five hundred dollars, and this was from her uh, political campaign fund, and she returned it to Mr. Romero, but. The reason she listed on the check was return to donor, donation received outside of fundraising period, which is a clear indication she was aware of uh, Texas Ethics Commission 253.151. Now, three days later, on March the 15th, Judge Dunson on her GoFundMe account, paid $290.30, and she listed the expenditure category as fees. So she paid GoFundMe $290.30. Now, when I first saw this, it didn't click. You know, I saw two ninety thirty, and I just thought somebody, you know, wrote her a check for, or, you know, made a contribution on GoFundMe for $290.30. And when I realized reading into her finance report that this was a political expenditure, I went to GoFundMe and found out that GoFundMe charges 2.9% per transaction, meaning like if I give you $100, they're going to take out $2.90. <laughs> and when I, I read into it even further, they charge $0.30 cents automatically deducted from each donation so you never have to worry about paying a bill. That's from the GoFundMe website. Now, when I saw the amount, $290, I immediately, you know, realizing that it was from her expenditure account, 
that she paid for $10,000. And what I had thought was, well, maybe uh, they had taken out 10000 and this was just the GoFundMe fees. But no, what was made it all click together, it was $290.30. That equals $10,000 in cash that she received on the Ides of March, March the 15th, three days before our trial. So you can track all this money um, and you reported it. You, I mean, so who did you report it to? Oh, hang on. It gets even better. Our trial that started on March the 18th, Monday, Judge Dunson took during the trial $4,170 in anonymous political contributions during the jury trial. And also make note, she was aware on March the 6th that she couldn't receive any more money. Now, after I lost custody of my daughter, uh, of course, Judge Dunson on the first day of the trial said, Mr. Santana, you cannot have any witnesses. You cannot present any evidence. Wow, so, that's, that's a violation of your due process. Yes, and someone was paying her hundreds of dollars every day that we were in court. Now, we had the final orders hearing the following month in April of 2019. And she received a final anonymous political contribution on April of 2019 of $500 on the same day as the final orders hearing. Whoa, anonymous? Anonymous. Mm. In fact, out of 51 political contributions on her GoFundMe, 49 of them are anonymous. Wow. Now, you know how GoFundMe, if you go to a GoFundMe page, it'll say, uh, like in Judge Dunson's case on, let me get the date right here, April the 6th of 2020, it shows that she had 49 donors for a total of $9,360. Then... On August the 7th, 2022, her GoFundMe still shows $9,360. Only this time, there's 51 donations, political contributions. The page was manipulated. It still shows the same amount, $9,360 raised, but on August the 7th, 2022, it shows 51 contributions. And if you go back and look on the report, April the 6th, 2020, it was 49 contributions for $9,360. It was manipulated. Okay. So who, who did you report this to? Okay, I reported it. Hang on just a second. And I know you sent me a lot of documents. I haven't been able to read all of them, yes, but sir. yeah. Uh, hang on just a moment. Because to me, it sounds like, you know, you, you have everything mapped out just like I have everything mapped out in my case. Yes, sir. Okay, the state agency or commission that I reported it to the commission's actions are governed by Article 5, Section 1A of the Constitution and Chapter 33 of the Texas Government Code. And that would prohibit me from 
uh, well, uh, no, I, I, uh, I received a letter from them without the name of the judge. But my understanding is, and they did not name the judge, but they did give me a letter saying that, yes, they assigned it a case number and that they are investigating. Uh, it, it's it's a, uh, a commission or an agency that uh, investigates judges here in Texas. Okay, so are you here? Are you from Texas? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, raised. yeah. That's the uh, state commission on judicial conduct. And in fact, I would invite you now to attend October second. You know, at nine o'clock in Austin. Uh, every two years, they give uh, they allow a public meeting to to commence and. The last one was two wow. years ago. So if you can make it October 2nd, there's going to be oh, I, a I, bunch I, of... I will, in, yeah. I will be there. Now, do they have a sign-up list? Too? Yeah, you can. You, we signed up um, at the door last time we uh, showed up two years ago. But every two years, this opportunity comes. But you should try to make it out there. I think there's going to be a no, bunch I, of people. I'm definitely going to be there. And right. I'll bring you know, my paperwork with me. Right. Well, you're... Definitely. So... Um, you were talking about perjury and some other things, you know, when we went over some okay. some things. Uh, in let, the let's pretend you and I are attorneys. Okay. Uh, going against each other in Judge Dunson's court. Okay. And I was to scream in front of the bench during the trial in your face, shaking and trembling like, I'm having a seizure, and I screamed out, and forgive me for saying, I, I, I don't like to cuss. I do my best not to do it. But you know what? For this occasion, you know, Julie Ketterman screamed, bullshit. Is that on the record? Yes, sir. Ooh. You have, let me see, uh, the transcript of where this occurred. And my attorney said, you hear that, judge? And she says, shaking and trembling. Yeah, yeah, I'll say it again. Bullshit. Judge Dunson never lifted her eyes up from where she was sitting, from the bench. After those two outbursts? Yes. This was judges re uh, the, the judge's reaction. You can't, we don't do Einstein and Perry Mason. We don't do stuff like that. Stuff is produced. It's produced prior to, and then my attorney tells the judge, I respectfully ask that you instruct Julie Ketterman not and Julie Ketterman screams at him, don't call me. And then Judge Johnson says, okay, wait a minute. My attorney says, I said not to get close to me. Because she was literally like trembling, shaking, going into a seizure, getting closer and closer to my attorney. And then Julie Ketterman says, oh, oh okay. Then... My attorney says, I respectfully ask that you admonish not to cuss at my face, judge. And Julie Ketterman says, I didn't cuss at your face. She so, denied cussing all together. I mean, that's the same thing that happened in my case. Um, you know, opposing counsel, I was pro se, but opposing counsel, you know, st stated that her client made statement uh, a misstatement of her testimony. I said that her client had made a statement and she says oh, it's a mischaracterization of of her testimony and i'll tell you right now like uh, i get it i understand it um for an uh, opposing counsel or counsel to raise their voice at a judge like that you know they're officers of the court the um texas judicial canon says that you know when a judge has information that an attorney is being dishonest or untruthful or they're has, supposed to report it correct and so it's i'm wondering if dunson reported ketterman because i know she wouldn't no, report she didn't. yeah no and, she did not and and so that's that's one of the reasons why 
uh, October 2nd is going to be, uh, you know, great for us. I'm be- going to be there. Because we, we need people to speak out on these patterns. You know, these judges, they're letting some people get away with, you know, absolute unethical practices. You know, and when you have an attorney saying bullshit out loud, I mean, in Dunson. Nice. Yeah, in Dunson's court, I tried to give her bailiff some paperwork, and he threw my paperwork across the uh, the court. I mean, it was it went about three or four feet out, and it was about three or four feet high, and it just the papers just flowed down to the ground, you know. And I know the judge had to have seen it, and so I mean, I don't know if she's losing her courtroom. Um, you know, she's not enforcing the the decorum of the court. I've had issues with her where. She just tells me straight up no. Um, and, and that's the problem is that when we go into these courts and we're expecting justice, we're paying a lot of money um, for the right decision, we're paying these lawyers, and then you have unethical lawyers that are doing things like fundraising and giving money and, and oh, shuffling, okay. shuffling these it things. And better. Oh, okay. Keep going. Before the jury reached a verdict, Judge Dunson awarded Julie Ketterman over a hundred thousand dollars in legal fees against me and ordered it to be child support. So, you know, there's case law about that, right? That they can't order um, attorney fees in the form of child support. Well, see, in October of 2019, Judge Dunson locked me up for six months for owing her largest benefactor, Julie Ketterman, and other fees, you know, over 100000 She ordered me locked up for six months. And she told me from the bench, Mr. Santana, when you get ready to get released in six months, and I'll see to it, you serve every day of this sentence. They're going to bring you back to me, and I will resentence you to another six months until you pay this money. She was an enforcer, like a gangster. Wow. Now, my appellate attorney, uh, Walter Mahoney, uh, you know how they have the, the, the Heimlich maneuver. Correct. You know, it's Correct. Uh, credited to a doctor by the name of Heimlich. Mr. Mahoney argued in front of Judge Dunson that you cannot lock up a man in Texas for owing child support. You can't do it. Or no, no, for owing attorney fees is what he said. And he said, there's case law on this. And he read it out into the record. It turns out Mr. Mahoney was the one that argued that case before the Texas Supreme Court. And they agreed with him. Oh, wow. Wow. And he's there in Harris County? Yes. Wow. You know, I read case law into the record, too, and the judge just simply refused to do anything. I mean, it, it, it was pretty horrible in my trial what they did to me. Uh, it, it, she knows what she's going to do. She's pro-mom. I don't know if you've seen the Wayne Del Trofino video, but yes. on, the, on the Wayne Del Trofino video, you know, the guy is saying that, you know, it, and it's the same issue with me you know i have a mother that wants to see my 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 son and i'm i'm in there dunson's court for child custody but you know you're putting things on the record and i'll tell you right now i just got my transcripts a few weeks ago and i've been going through them and my oral motions that i made before the court are gone i i told her to make i i I did several uh upwards to five or six oral motions um for different things and but i know three of the oral motions were to take a uh i i asked for an oral motion to take a to make a finding of domestic violence my ex had just told the court that she had hit me while i was driving and it's not on the record now but they did live leave 
pieces of my testimony where I'm asking for an, a ruling on those motions. So even though they're they're out of my uh, transcripts, there's still remnants of me asking for my findings. So they took the oral motions out, but they didn't take you know the the little bits and pieces that I left out. Yes. Well, it uh, the disadvantage I had. Judge Dunson had thirty thousand three hundred and twenty dollars in cash to rule against me and everything else that that you know that I, we tried to do. Yeah, I mean it, it's ridiculous. You know, you you get an appeal at attorney and they still aren't listening to the law. They're not legislating from the bench. They're they're oppressing people. And yes. I think I think judges should. You know, it, the Constitution, that same Constitution, uh, Article 5, um, if you go down, it, it says that you can impeach a judge uh, being charged or indicted for oppression. And in the penal code, you have official oppression and abuse of office uh, in the penal code. So I always tell parents, you start filing criminal charges because we already know the SCJC um, does a poor job at investigating these grievances. And they're not going to help you. And so the other form of re relief that we do have is criminal charges. And it, the Constitution allows judges to be charged and indicted for oppression. And when judges are doing that, they're willfully, willingly just refusing to uphold the law. They don't want to listen to case law. You know, they have certain attorneys uh, raising money for them and then yelling bullshit at them. I mean, this is uh, this this right here is is n needs to be dismantled, whatever it is. And, yes. you know, at, at this point, you know, the SCJC knows the state bar knows everybody in Harris County knows how bad these judges are. And that's why I'm going to the Supreme Court. I'm, and when I go to this, when I say I'm going to the Supreme Court, it doesn't mean I'm trying to file a case in with the Supreme Court, but I'm trying to meet with the justices of the Supreme Court so that we can say, hey, man, look, there's no relief to report. I mean, there's no um, mechanism of reporting this issue because nobody will take it. Nobody will will want to deal with it or it's just too complicated for them. And so it, it's when you have oppressive measures like that, you have uh, judges that aren't even following the law. I don't care if they were elected or not. They need to be uh, held accountable to, to the law because yes. judges don't. Discretion doesn't mean um, I can just plow over you. You know, discretion is what I say. Move with caution. It's just like uh, going through uh, a yellow light at an intersection. Right. You proceed with discretion yes. or caution. If it's green, you go. If it's red, you're supposed to stop. Just like judges are supposed to rule. You know, when it's against the law, they call balls and strikes. But when judges are just running red lights, you know, at a high speed with no regard to, you know, the, the safety of others, you know, that's oppressive. And they're using that power. And there's something that, that and that's kind of why I've gotten into this whole uh, judicial reform deal is because now they're just plowing over people. They're just taking your kids and they're doing whatever they want with you at, at your expense. And so there's no reporting. We, we need to figure out a way to hold these judges accountable that are just running rogue. Well, uh, what I did, Kim Og is a personal friend of mine since the 1990s. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with her. She is oh. a district attorney. Oh, Kim Og and I are really good friends. She just doesn't know it. <laughs> you should, you know, you should sit down and tell her, hey, Kev, I talked to George Saldana the other day and see what she says. <laughs> but go ahead. Okay. Uh, in May of this year, I filed a Texas Local Government Code Section 87.015. And that is a petition to remove district attorney. And the two things allowed are, you know, the, the accusation actually is incompetency or corruption. 
Now, from what I have been told since 1845, this has been successful only twice. The first one was uh, the district attorney from El Paso. Yep. And Yvonne Rosales. And there's one more. And can you get it? You know where it's at? No, I, I Omar Carmona. Yeah. The attorney. Oh, we lost him. Okay, sorry about that. It, sorry. It, I, I dropped the phone. Anyway. So uh, Omar. Omar Carmona. Uh, he's my friend now. What I did, I took every, I took his petition, every motion, everything. And I whited out, you know, of course, you know, on my computer. Right, right. I filled in my information for his and Kim Og's information for uh, Ivan Rosales. Right. And, and, you know, I've been thinking about doing that, too. I just haven't had enough well, time. I'll tell you what. I am in the final phases, God willing, of her being removed from office. Good, good. Uh, and see, I present mom a week, about a week, maybe 10 days before the trial, pulled the gun on our daughter. And that's when I tell you that her older daughter said, oh, no, mom was with me in Pasadena. And her sister testified right after her saying, oh, no, we were all at the Galleria. Me, her daughter, you know, the one that had just testified and another cousin, they got caught lying. And Judge Dunson did absolutely nothing. Yep. In fact, he let them, uh, they had a recess. They came back 20 minutes later and cleaned it up. Oh, we remember what happened now. Yeah. And yeah. the judge w was supposed to uh, order a mistrial, report them to the district attorney, and at a minimum told the jury, you know what, you cannot believe anything these people have told you. But, you know, there was $30,320 on the line. She couldn't let that go. Yeah. No, she, now, no she's, she's done some of that to me, too. But go ahead. The, I reported all this to the district attorney's office, and they freely admit today, yes. Mr. Santana did report all this corruption to them, but she has prosecutorial discretion. And she chose not to charge anybody in these in this case. So prosecutorial discretion, again, it's like going through that red light. You know, um, prosecutorial discretion isn't supposed to be used for um uh, just because you don't want to to hear a case, and when we were talking earlier about uh, Kim Og, so my movement started with interference with child custody, and she would not want to take these charges for interference with child custody, you know. And we were hitting up her office to try to set a meeting with her. We sat down with their command staff from the um, family family violence unit, which does you know all the protective orders and stuff like that right, right. And, and so you know we tried to press charges and again and these are felony offenses aggravated perjury is yes. a third degree of felony offense and when they just refuse you're right that's one of the reasons why i wanted to petition her for incompetence because if you track a felony a felony ha um, shall be fought with before a magistrate and that's in the code of criminal procedure chapter two so with that being said, you know, and her blocking my my felony complaints to that magistrate just by using prosecutorial discretion. Again, prosecutorial discretion, it's case law, but it's not written into law. But what is written into law is where a felony goes. And when you're failing to report the felony based on prosecutorial discretion, 
and you're not really investigating, again, that's an oppressive move. You're oppressing that person's First Amendment right to make a criminal complaint. So, so yeah, I'm with you. If you want to remove her, I'll do what I can to help. Um, you know, if, if I if I can even be there and support, you know, because this is something that I've been working on, and nobody wants to hold these judges accountable. I filed a criminal complaint on Judge Peak for official oppression when she had two of her bailiffs um, hold me in contempt as I was trying to litigate my case. She, she asked, you know, opening statements and then if we had any issues. And so we were bringing up our housekeeping issues. That's what it was. And so I started putting down case law, you know, don't remove me from this court and quit taking me off of these Zooms. And since it was all being Zoomed while uh, this was happening, people were watching this. I'm in person and she has it on Zoom and people are watching it. They're recording it. And I'm putting down case law to... Um, tell the judge to quit removing me from these hearings. And she put, she gets the bailiffs. They uh, hold me in contempt, and wow. you know they push me out. At that time, we called for law enforcement to press charges on her and the bailiffs. So Harris County Precinct One came in, and they went and talked to the sheriffs, bailiffs, and to Judge Peak, and they came out five minutes later, said you can go back in. Well, when I went back in, Judge Peak, opposing counsel, and the amicus are all having ex parte communication about um, where they want me to go um, for supervised visitation. So when I heard all of that stuff, I walked in and I heard, uh, I yelled, I yelled, and it's on the record. Are y'all having ex parte communication? And still, they still subjected me to uh, um, supervised visits. So I've, I've been on supervised visits um, for the last three years, but I won't accept it because, again, the, the, the legalities of how these court proceedings are supposed to go, they're not going that way. So it's all fraud before the court. I mean, these judges are just, um, they're making bonehead decisions, one. They should, they, you shouldn't run for that elected seat if you don't know what you're doing, right? And some or of these- you're going to be corrupt. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're not even following the bare fundamental basics of the law, you don't need to be on that bench. Voted in or voted out. And again, the Constitution talks about incompetence. But again, how many judges have been removed off the bench for incompetence? The SCJC is not doing their job. So if the SCJC is not doing their job, I can't report it to them. The Supreme Court can't get notification because the SCJC won't, can't figure this out then the only form of relief I have is criminal charges. So, wow. you know. Wow. Yeah, I, I've been in Harris County since uh, early 2018. And, um, you know, there, there's just a 94% a of non-custodial parents in Harris County are, are men. And they play by those rules. I mean, Dunson, like you said, you've seen that video that Wayne Del Trofino had. And the guy was saying, you know, she just doesn't like men. Dunson had me um, arrested on my first day of trial. And then when I got arrested, I got arrested for assault on a peace officer with bodily injury, the bailiff. Wow. And I had video of it. I was recording. I was live streaming because I knew that there was issues with this. I even did a recusal and I had a recusal on file to the administrative judge. And the administrative judge, she didn't rule on the recusal and they made me go to trial with a recusal on file. So they bench warrant me back or that's what they said anyway from the jail. So I came into my final trial in November wearing a. Uh, an orange jumpsuit in shackles and they made me to be the monster even though i had a recording of the bailiff attacking me it was later dropped it was later dropped i told dunson you know and dunson doesn't care but i did walk behind the scenes behind the 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 courtroom you know the the doors that the judges and the yep, bailiffs yep. come out i was behind there because that's where the elevator is from the jail Yes. And when I came through there, through that hallway, there was pictures of black women holding black little girls' hands.
but there's no pictures of men or families. Right. You know, you go to a dental office and you see a big old family portrait with a whole bunch of oh, yeah. Yeah. people smiling. But you have a family court judge that is catering only to females. And it's, it's dangerous for men and, and, and fathers, you know, in Harris County, even the bailiffs, even the bailiffs are subject to the same, um, the same stuff as, as, as we're going through. The bailiff in her court started yelling at me, telling me that um, he hadn't seen his child in 12 years. And you work for a judge or work with a judge, I should say. Yeah. I mean, it's an issue and it's, it's systematic and it needs to stop. Well, I, before the end of the week, God willing, I am going to file a uh, recusal again. Well, the, the Kim Og decision will come this week. As soon as I get it, she has to recuse herself because I'm going to subpoena her to appear in court to testify about the GoFundMe money. I'm going to issue a subpoena for uh, the banking records, credit card records, and GoFundMe. I can prove that she laundered the money, committed wire fraud, and all of this she was so kind enough to provide to me. She literally filed this in her report. And made it public on her GoFundMe. And I, everyone that has seen this, everyone that has, you know, uh, and, and man, I tell you what, in the last five years, I can tell you, you know, my life is destroyed. My mom's business is destroyed because of this. But more importantly, I can tell you, everyone that I have met, that I've ever shaked hands with, I'll tell them my story because I'm hoping to find someone that can do something about this. So, um, I've been in there the last seven years. I retired from the Houston fire department. Um, since then I've been fighting this. I've had an attorney. My attorney was a 42, 43 year old, or uh, 43 year practicing attorney she wasn't a spring chicken she knew what was going down and she told me straight up you know judge peak doesn't know what she's doing and when she would say that you know my attorney was intelligent i mean she was she knew what she was talking about she taught me a lot of things that that i still practice today advocating and when i came to my census i said look if there this 42 42-year practicing attorney can't get a simple enforcement done, she's either in on it or the judge is just refusing to uphold the law. So why am, I, why am I still paying this attorney? Why am I even, uh, you know, trying to, to, you know, pay to play if the, the game is rigged? Yes. So, and, and you're right, it does ruin people. It, it ruins relationships, it ruin, ruins families, people's livelihoods are destroyed because judges are doing this. Man, I get it. I, I um, you know, I'm, yes, I've been thrown into the whole judicial reform advocacy. I just wanted to see my child and now... I'm going to Austin to testify to all of these things. I work with a number of advocates that want the same thing. And we're going after the system because the system is, is failing. It is. It and, really is. and, and it's, it's going to take the, the, the news isn't going to pick this up, you know, so it's going to have to be us that have a social media following. That's going to have to expose yes. this. And I, I don't know how you found me, but I'll tell you that I, I try to put as much content out. I'm tired of them telling people, don't tell your story or the judge is going to get mad. Man, these judges don't give a shit what we're doing. The, you know what? Guess what? I'm going to use my First Amendment and I'm going to expose it. And so yes. I'm going to stay true to what I'm doing because I know that eventually, it, you know, it, it 
people don't want to look at it. People don't want to see it. They don't want to hear it. They can't comprehend that it even happens. But the only people who know it happens is the people that it's destroyed from family court. So I'm with you, bro. Um, whatever you want to do, uh, if I can help in any type of way, I, I would I would love to help and be a part of, you know, whatever you have going. Because I'll definitely keep you updated on everything. Now, the only thing that I ask, the letter from the Judicial Commission, I know it does not have Judge Dunson's name on it. Uh, I, I, you know, honestly, I think it's good. It's okay to use it because it doesn't name her. Even if it, even if it did name her, you can use it. It's your First Amendment right, you know. The, the well, but it you run into the Article Thirty Three, uh, and it lists on there, you know how you know you're limited. You can't, you know, use anything from the commission, and you know I have them on my side. I don't want to get into the situation where, you know, they're mad with me. Right now, they are literally have issued subpoenas for the GoFundMe and her banking records. Well, yeah, that sounds like a plan. I mean, they had the no, the the SEJ. They're, they're going after her. Well, I mean, I have proved beyond a reasonable doubt that she took bribes mm -hmm. before, during. And after the trial, you know, 10 th and she didn't report the $10,000. She did not report it to the ethics commission. More importantly, she signed as a judicial candidate that uh, she some federal agreement, some federal campaign finance that she cannot accept more than $5,000 from one individual. Now, honestly, I think Julie Ketterman paid the, t excuse me, paid the $10,000. Mom and her family, they couldn't come up with $10,000 if they had 20 years to do it in. Yeah, I mean, it, we're seeing the, the same scam with the protective orders. I mean, uh, you know, when somebody goes to the 280th, we're seeing the same thing. You know, they're they're just giving out rulings based on who opposing counsel is. And there's really no lawyering going on. There's no litigating. It's kind of like, no, what do you want to do? No. What do you want to do? No, I don't like you. I like her. You know, even though she yelled bullshit at me, like if I yelled bullshit at the lawyer, at the judge, what would happen to me? You'd still be in jail. Oh, yeah. Terroristic and threat. And second and, time. Yep. And how come it wasn't reported? So one of the things, I, I don't know if you've been keeping up with, with my page and some of the things I do, but um, there's an advocacy group by the name of Texas for uh, Judicial Accountability. And one of the bills that they have just uh, drafted and submitted to the legislation or to the legislature was uh, videos in the courtroom. So this next legislative session, we'll be pushing a bill to get past that we can have video cameras in the courtroom because for me again i was held in contempt for trying to litigate my case with some housekeeping issues and i was throwing down some case law just telling the judge hey look you've been throwing me out of this courtroom and these zoom proceedings you need to stop i have a right to be here and when i brought that up she threw me she had two bailiffs escort me out they didn't handcuff me but they escorted me out and she said i was held in contempt and it's on my transcripts, you know, and we live in 2024. There's no reason why we have to be subjected to what the court reporter reports, because we're starting to see the inaccuracies and yes. people are starting to record and there's video recording. And you, the, so at this point, you know, these court reporters are not reliable, no. you know, and people are paying thousands of dollars for unreliable transcripts you can go to uh any app on your iphone or your uh, the internet and it will do you know real-time transcriptions and they're so much more accurate and even zoom i know for sure that in zoom they have a, a window where it, it will uh transcribe everything you've said and in one of my zoom hearings um in one of my zoom hearings we had the the uh 
the transcriptions on the right hand side as we were doing it and judge peak didn't know and so i'm telling her hey she just lied let's go back to the transcript that's on the zoom and judge peak was like i can't do that i don't know what you're talking about but then people started asking for ada accommodations because they can't hear it's on their laptop so let's do ada accommodations put the transcriptions up there but they don't even want to do that so i think you know cameras in the courtrooms is a good start uh, 2024, yes. I'm not trying to throw court reporters out of, you know, the whole no, system. They need to be held accountable. Correct. Because you're messing with somebody's life. You yes. know, and if you're going to charge whatever you charge and you're giving them a product that's been altered, uh, not only that, but it's a government document, you know, and that itself is a crime if you're going to alter a government document. And if it's for the judge, you're helping the judge lie, then both of y'all, that's a conspiracy. Both of y'all need to go to jail. Yes. You know, you're, you're, you're messing with people's lives. But, hey, Noe, um, I appreciate the call. Let's talk a little bit later. Um, that sounds good. I, it was a pleasure talking to you, and I'll get your no, story call out. Call me anytime. Yeah. Um, let's, let's stay in contact, and, and we'll see what happens. Let me share something with you that I have found about my case. Mm -hmm. There was a judge in New Jersey that was, that took a bribe on a case. Now, he was removed from the bench. It was proven. Yeah. You know what? He, he, did take bribes. A defendant in a case that had nothing to do with the bribery case had his case overturned because the potential for the judge to take bribes had been proven and they they uh, they gave him a new trial because the judge was proven to have taken bribes while he while the judge was on the bench. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't know what's going to happen with my case, but you know, if if they don't remand it back to district court, if I lose in the court of appeals, I mean, I've done everything that I can, and I'm going to keep speaking out. And you know, they they may have. One has taken my child, you know, because of their unethical behavior, but it, I'm going to make sure that I ruin their professional career, you know, because they they shouldn't be doing that, not just to no. me, but to anybody. No, and, it, and, and it's and it's us, you know, we the citizens that um, are, you know, uh, w- we 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 were told in high school look you are the people you know you people run the government and you know that's what the constitution is yes. there for is to protect the people from the government and if we have these judges you know i'm going to start using that constitution to start you know removing judges from the bench and you know that's just what i'm going to do all right well reach out to me now i sent you the papers that i have on kimog mm-hmm I sent you an email with it. The complaint, the exhibits, and then the letters that I've received from the court uh-huh. allowing my case to move forward. So let me let me run you down this rabbit hole real quick. You seem like an uh, intelligent guy. So if you look at the Constitution, Article 5, it says that judges are conservators of the peace. And when you go up there, it, it the the first section of article five says that the judiciary is going to be comprised of uh, one Supreme court, one, uh, court of criminal appeals, court of appeals, district court judges, magistrates. Right. But it doesn't say family courts. It says district courts. So you go into the code of criminal procedure. And when you look at chapter two of the code of criminal procedure, it says who are magistrates. And magistrates, it says Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, Court of Criminal Appeals, and District Courts. So, legislative intent is how the law is written. With that being said, 
what I did was I filed my criminal complaint straight into my family district court case. One, because they say they have exclusive jurisdiction. Well, if you have exclusive jurisdiction pertaining to that order and someone has violated that order, you are a district court judge named by the Constitution and by the state law, you're a magistrate. So you're able to receive that. And these judges are freaking out because they're like, well, I don't want to deal with it. Well, you can refer it. You can refer that criminal complaint to the DA's office for investigation or to another magistrate to hold a, um, a probable cause hearing. But they don't even want to do that. So you were telling me about your complaint with Kim Og. I filed a yes. criminal complaint on Kim Og and I filed it into my case. So what I just told you about filing a criminal complaint with a magistrate, I've just mm -hmm. done that. Um, I subpoenaed Kim Og to my trial and the judge, she didn't even quash it. Kim, Kim Og didn't show up. I, Kim Og didn't show up. I asked, <laughs> why isn't she here? You know, why isn't she here with this uh, tangible documents that I subpoenaed here her for? Um, yes. she did quash the precinct four officers, all of them that I subpoenaed to come to my final trial. So again, when you tell me that she says you can't bring your witnesses in, you can't, uh, give a testimony or, or, or stuff like that. I understand it. I get it because Dunson has blocked me that way. So those are some unorthodox methods that I try to tell people, Hey, try that. You know, if you can't report it to law enforcement because they won't take it, the DA doesn't want to look at it, file it right back into your case because it becomes public record. And th so there's a there's a case law and it's ex parte clear and it's in the Court of Appeals, Court of Criminal Appeals there in Harris County. So ex parte clear 1978 states what a magistrate is and it goes into a case about a uh, a guy committed a felony. It went to a JP court. Then the district court says, no, we're going to trump the JP court and we're going to take the felony charge and we're going to up his bond. And this guy was like, no, a JP court is a magistrate and their bond was lower. I want to stay in the JP court's jurisdiction. And so the whole case law goes into what a magistrate is. And it again, it says, you know, a district court judge is a magistrate. So the family courts there in Harris County in the i want to say the the late 1990s early 2000s they uh -huh. they filed a, a a policy or procedure to separate civil courts from family courts and so that now these family court judges think that they're only supposed to only hear family court but right. they didn't change the law they didn't change the law to be separate they're they're separate, but they're still a district court. So it's like Superman. You're, you're playing Superman without your cape in family court as yeah, a judge. Yeah. Right. But you do have a cape. You can use it, but they don't want to use it. So there again, it's, it's blocking. It's infringing on your right to file your criminal complaints. Because if law enforcement doesn't take it, the DA doesn't want to take it. And the judge doesn't want to take it. Well, all the way around, that's oppressive. And whether they like it or not, the legislature has already legislated what perjury is, what aggravated perjury is, what interference with child custody yeah. is. And if you're a family court judge and you're not admonishing at the least when people lie, then what is your purpose on that bench? I was going to say, you're, you're, you're not upholding your oath. You're not you know, doing the duty you're sworn to do. I mean, you, I mean, and they asked to be in that position. They asked to be uh, judges, right? So why are you a judge if you're not doing, that's like being a fireman and not going into house fires or being a police officer and running away from robberies. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. And, and that's why we should start removing these judges that are incompetent. Um, you know, because when you go to court, okay, the judge made a mistake, made two mistakes. But now they're using the court of appeals. They're making you appeal your case because they don't like you. 
And I always tell people, the judge doesn't have to like me, but she has to uphold my rights, whether she likes it or not. Yes. You know, it's just like when when people are protesting in front of police officers, sometimes these protesters are being real ugly, saying ugly things, but the police officer just doesn't have the right to or the discretion to just wail on them with with whatever they have. Right. That's their protected speech and they have the right to assemble and they have the right to be mad at their their government and peacefully protest. But when you do it in family court, <laughs> they're going to stop you some way or another. <laughs> wow. But, uh, yeah, man, let's talk later. Um, I appreciate the phone call. Um, uh, if you want me to put it out, I'll put it out. I'm not going to put yes, some, please. Some, some of the personal stuff we talked about, but um, I'm going to cut it up and um, put it out there for people to hear. Beautiful. So Beautiful. Like I say, the only thing, uh, just the letter from the judicial commission. Yeah. Uh, I won't. The only thing that, that I would say is that one just, you know, uh, clip the top of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, just, but, uh, I think everything else would be okay. You know, I, I like I said, they have subpoenaed her GoFundMe, her, you know, they're, they're, they're making strides in it. I just don't want to, you know, anger them. Mm hmm. But yeah, th thank you. I would appreciate it. And if you need anything at all, you can, dude. I don't sleep. I have spent the last five years, twelve at least twelve hours a day every day on this. Sometimes, very often, I go three, four days without sleep. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm on, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I've been working on this every day for hours at a time. Um, for years, you know, since 2017, when I started, you know, I, I've been in court since 2018, but I started, you know, my issues September 1, 2017. And I'll tell you the same thing. It, it I don't sleep. I'm, I'm up. And so I, I totally know where you're coming from. I'm sure a lot of people that, you know, may hear this may relate to, to this. And I think a study needs to be done about, um, our mental health and if these judges are knowingly doing this and conspiring and then it's affecting people in this way where their mental health is is being altered again that person needs to be removed from the bench and charges need to be brought or just don't run for that position in which you're unqualified for absolutely so absolutely well i appreciate it so much uh, I'm here. If you need anything, let me know, please. All right, buddy. Well, thank you. And we'll, we'll stay in touch. All right. All right. Bye-bye. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.